columnist and sports editor for the Tuscaloosa News and Tidesports.com. Cecil, convince me otherwise that Led Zeppelin II isn't the greatest rock and roll album ever produced. Really a blues album. I mean, they're really yeah. just doing, you know, it's it, that, you know, Lemon Song, that's just a Mississippi Delta blues is exactly what it is. But, uh, you know, they, they were built to be that. You know, Paige and, and John Paul were, very successful. You know, Paige had been in the Yardbirds, and John Paul was a session musician in London, and, and so they had a big budget to, to go and find the best guys and went and found Plant and Bonham. So so they were an all-star team uh, playing the blues. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's ask you this, Cecil. Uh, we're trying to figure out a second-team All-SEC quarterback. Uh, in mid-October here, someone to go behind Tua Tonga Vailoa. Based on what you've seen, and we know you're busy with Alabama, and it's hard to see extended stretches of a lot of these guys. If you had to pick the next quarterback in the SEC beyond Tua Tonga Vailoa today, who would you go with? It, it's a great question uh, and a hard question. You know, the guy who's done what they've asked him to do is Joe Burrow. Uh, statistically, he would not make it. Statistically, uh, you'd have a pretty strong case for, for Jordan Thomas, um, but although he did not play great against Alabama by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Drew Locke's been okay. He hadn't. He probably hadn't had the year that, that people have expected from him. You can see the talent. You can see the talent on Saturday. Uh, but he hadn't been, been consistent. Uh, I might you know, I would I would certainly throw Kellen Mond into that mix. So, um, you know, Fromm's been up and down, Stidham's been up and down, and that's probably being kind. Interested to see what Garantano does in the second half of the season. Here's some just SEC play numbers only that I'm going to throw at you. And when I when I first saw these, I looked at them this morning. Uh, I was pretty well shocked. Kellen Mond in SEC play only. Four touchdown passes, five interceptions. Jake Bentley in SEC play, six touchdowns, seven interceptions. We talked about Tamu, three touchdowns, four interceptions. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was surprised. Drew Locke in, in in three SEC games so far, Cecil. One touchdown pass. That was Saturday night here in Tuscaloosa. Five <laughs> interceptions. I mean, it's... When you look at conference play only, it becomes an even more difficult task. And then you got a guy like Felipe Frank Cecil down at Florida with eight touchdown passes and just four interceptions. It's it it hasn't, I guess, the point being sort of played out the script maybe with the quarterbacks like we we thought in terms of quality of play. Um, no, it, it to it this has, point, you know, the, I I guess the two first teamers in Atlanta were were Stidham and Locke. Because yeah. people didn't know what to do with Tua at, at that point. Um, so no, it's it's been there have been some guys who've had disappointing years, and I'm not going to you know call them out necessarily, but but for a combination of reasons, I don't think Locke, Bentley, Stidham, I, I don't think any of those guys have have had the year uh, that they want. But in terms of what their coach wants them to do, you know. Felipe Franks, you, you look at him sometimes yeah. and you say, man, he's, he's just not accurate. He doesn't do – but he's done what Dan wants him to do. And Burrow, Burrow is not a future NFL quarterback. I really don't believe that. But he's done what LSU's needed him to do. Uh, in a, in a, and this is a compliment. This is not a, a, a sideways swipe in a Greg McElroy kind of way. Now, I, I thought watching LSU on against Georgia, I thought the – most important part of that game was that they got a. We talked about this. They got a lead, and he didn't have to be the hero, and so he did what what his coaches want him to do. So, um, is, is he does, does he just make your draw jaw drop the way Tua does? No, of course he does. Uh, but is he giving LSU what they need to have them in the in the top ten? He sure is. The three guys, Cecil, that seem to be most talked about 
in, in the preseason, as far as preseason All SEC honors, Jared Stidham, Drew Locke, and Nick Fitzgerald, I would say. Uh, combined, yeah, I, I should have mentioned. I should have mentioned Nick. He's just not throwing very. Well. I mean, he's he's tough as nails. He's just not throwing very well. Combined TDs to interceptions for Stidham, for Locke, and Nick Fitzgerald to this point, Cecil. Four touchdown passes. Uh, actually, yeah, four touchdown passes for those three combined and 11 interceptions. <laughs> I mean, in conference you know, play. It, you, you, <laughs> know who that's, you know who that's not better than. That's not better than Jalen Hurts. No. And they, look, I've had some responses to this poll today, and I know they're semi-tongue-in-cheek, but if anything... Jalen has had his value increased by what we haven't seen from some supposed, you know, first team type all that, SEC quarterbacks around the league. Yeah, that that would be a fascinating uh, a fascinating vote for Jalen to be the second team all SEC quarterback. I'm with you on Joe Burrow though. I, I think exactly what you said. They he has done he has been exactly what they needed. Uh, at the quarterback position. And, you know, he's a tough dude, too. He, his personality, the way he plays, fits perfectly with, with O and, and, and really what they want to be. I guess my concern is, is he too much of a tough guy? Because Cecil, every time I watch Joe Burrow, he's taking big shots. And we and, uh, and we know the depth situation they have right now at quarterback at LSU. Yeah, that, that LSU-Mississippi State game on Saturday – it's going to be like when, when your kids were four or five and they took the Tonka truck and just <laughs> rammed them into each other as hard as they could. That's what that game's going to be like. Just just pieces and parts and uh, metal on metal. Um, Fitzgerald's going to take some shots. Burrow's going to take some shots. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, talking about a quarterback that's a little banged up right now, uh, Tua Tonga Vailoa. Uh, there, there, there's been a lot of interest, obviously, since the start of the third quarter on Saturday night at Bryant Denny Stadium. Uh, Cecil, the, uh, the, the, the buzz that was palpable, I would say, for a multitude of reasons in that stadium Saturday night, uh, sort of dim there, didn't it? Early in the third quarter. Uh, it did. Um, obviously, people were concerned, and you know the the parents coming down. I think, which is certainly understandable. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, but when they came down, I think everybody really didn't take that as a good sign. So uh, it, it seems to have worked out. You know, two of practice yesterday. Um, who knows? Who knows how the Tennessee game will go? Uh, you know, it could go like the the Arkansas game in terms of of getting a big lead, and or even the Ole Miss game, where you just don't see him that much, just because of the way that the the game has gone. I, I would say this. Um, I think at the absolute earliest comfortable point that Tua could come out in Knoxville, I think that's what Alabama fans want to see. I would definitely agree with that. And and again, as you saw in his place against Missouri, you had that luxury. I mean, it, it, it if you discounted the value, the potential value to Jalen Hurts, uh, before Saturday night, I, I and, and you still do, I, I don't know what I can say that can change your mind in terms of the luxury that Nick Saban has now uh, that, you know, Ohio State still has some solid quarterback depth. But think about having Joe Burrow as the backup to Dwayne Haskins, given what we've seen from Burrow so far this year. We've talked about Clemson with Kelly Bryant moving on, leaving them very exposed with Trevor Lawrence and a little else at the quarterback position. Um, just just uh, your thoughts on on Jalen, and, and have you seen the improvement that we've heard Nick Saban speak to, and I think a lot of other people have witnessed. Well, what was he against Missouri? Six for seven for 105, something like that? Yeah, nearly um, perfect. Uh, I mean, it's tough to play better, and people, you know, I understand people, Fred, and, and two is the first-team quarterback for a reason that debate's done but you know Jalen how, how many how many guys go into a stadium and their backup quarterback is a is a junior football wise you know he's, although he's going to graduate but 
you know, Jalen, how many, the backup quarterback, you're, you're, you're the home team, the backup quarterback who's coming in has already beaten you in his career. Um, twice. So, you know, how many times does that ever happen? Oh yeah. If we can get to the backup, of course, he's beating our brains out two times, but you know, and I understand Tennessee's different. I understand they've got Jeremy coaching now, but I mean, how much more positive experience can you have than you've already played in that stadium and beaten them, and now you're the backup? So, so I, I don't know what else yeah. you can add to that. Yeah, in the last in the last visit for Jalen Hurts up in Knoxville, I think he ran for 120 plus uh, in yeah. that blowout of the falls, and he comes back as the backup. I mean, that's just you don't see that anywhere else. No, you that, just that don't. That never happened. I, I, I could. I would have to do a lot of research, but I don't know that I could ever find a situation where that happened. What about Jeremy uh, and what that win Saturday over Auburn meant, meant to you know this this still undergoing process that he's working through up there uh, at Tennessee? Is there is there any parallels you could draw to that win for Jeremy? Uh, obviously, we got to see how things play out, but potential impact of that win on the road at Auburn for Jeremy, maybe in, in comparison to some some wins we saw Nick Saban here in 2007, because as we saw in 2007, just because there was the win over Arkansas early, the the, the win over Tennessee there at mm-hmm. the midway point, it, it isn't necessarily a predictor of a strong close, is it? It's not, although, you know, the textbook thing, didn't help that year either where you lose your center and, and absolutely um you know some other some other guys Glenn Coffee and, yeah and it's tough yeah and it's tough mentally I, I'll say this um Tennessee's roster is not there yet they're gonna miss Congbo on Saturday they're gonna miss Patuli for a half you know that's uh, of all the halves in your 16 halves of regular SEC play the half you don't want your best linebacker out for is the first half against Alabama. You know, that's, that's, you couldn't pick a, a worse timing for that penalty. Um, but say what you will about them. Jeremy had them going in and say what you will about all. They're on the road at a ranked SEC team. They haven't won an SEC game since 2016. And in the second half of that game, Tennessee was clearly the team that thought they were going to win the game, and Auburn wasn't sure. You know, and that says a lot for Jeremy to have them come out of that locker room in the second half with that attitude that, hey, we're going to win this game. Um, on the road, against the ranked team, we're just going to do it. We're making some plays. we got faith in what we're doing. Our quarterback's going to put it up there. Our receivers are going to make some catches. And we feel good about ourselves. And their roster is not there yet, but that's a that's a heck of an attitude to instill in a team. That was a huge win for the SEC East too. I mean, when you talk about sure, uh, sure. previous years, uh, just look at the the, the last few weeks. Um, the SEC East with Florida going into Mississippi State and getting a win a couple weeks ago, and then Florida, Saturday Tennessee State and LSU. Yeah, I mean. Is it is it time yet, Cecil, to to welcome the SEC East back to the grown ups table, or or where are we at? It, that? It, it's it's getting better. It's you know Alabama still skews that. You know, there's no Alabama on the other other side. Say what you will about Georgia, they're now zero and one against the West. So so, um, it, it, they're not equal because Alabama's on this side. But it's getting closer, you know, it, it's getting closer. Now, I, I think the teams at the bottom of the West are still, you know, they can they can sing. Now, losing, losing Metcalf really hurts Ole Miss. Uh, it really does. Yeah, that's, it does. That's, Huge. That's a five-star Especially this week. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and for the rest of the year. That's a, that's a five-star guy. I thought he was having a better year than, than A.J. Brown, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So... Yeah, but Ole Miss could still sting somebody. Arkansas could still, you know, they, they, they're struggling, but they could still get another conference win 
somewhere in there. I think I think A and M's pretty solid, and uh, will show that for the rest of the year. You know, they, they went in. That, that's a that's a quiet win, but it's just a scalp that that Jim to go into Texas to South Carolina like that. Absolutely. You know that nobody made a big deal out of that, but that's a nice win. You know, that, uh, for Jimbo. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, that keeps uh, – it's kind of like a, a six-foot par putt, you know, on the eighth hole that mm. that, a, that a guy makes that, that nobody really thinks about when they make that yeah, six-footer for par. Yeah, it's got a little break in it too, you know. Right, and downhill a little bit. And, 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 and a guy or a gal makes that putt, and everybody goes, well, that's a nice par-saving putt. But in reality, the, the, the long-term effects of it, uh, could end up proving quite quite large. Um, let me ask I'm, you I'm this: still, I still think the best possible non-college football playoff bowl game this year would be Texas versus Texas A&M. Oh, oh. wherever they play it, the, the the Sugar Bowl would be wise to, because they don't have a playoff game to go all in. They they probably can't get A and M. The league protocol probably won't let them end up. Picking them, but that game would sell in New Orleans would would sell five million tickets. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there not, talk not about literally, the but you would have a lot of fans in town spending a lot of money yeah. to see what would be a, what I think would be a really good football. Game. Absolutely was was there talk last year about Texas and A and M maybe in the Texas Bowl? Yeah, um, but that was, you know, and, and that would have been fine. But that was two teams that were kind of muddling around. Right, we're talking about a six, a, seven, a, and five. A we're New talking Year's about teams that could be ten and two. You know, yeah, New Year's six, like ten and two football team. Yeah, so. definitely a, a different perspective uh, when you look at it that way. Uh, let me ask you about Raquan Davis, Cecil. And we're talking with Cecil mm-hmm. Hurt, the sports editor and columnist for the Tuscaloosa News and TideSports dot com, on a Tuesday edition of Southern Fried Sports, presented by Mercedes Benz of Tuscaloosa and Carty and Lloyd Attorneys at Law. Raquan Davis, we heard Nick Saban. Talk about that situation. Raekwon, of course, flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct in the Missouri game Saturday night, caught throwing a few punches. Um, there was a powwow, apparently, according to Saban, between himself and SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey on the incident. Uh, Cecil, I don't recall anyway many uh, incidents that that have have led to Nick Saban publicly outlining the potential for a loss of playing time when it comes to discipline uh, for a player. Uh, with that in mind, sort of what is your expectation maybe for Raquan Davis Saturday at Tennessee? Um, I, I don't know, and you're correct. Usually when he makes a statement like he made yesterday and he'll stop that statement at, this will be handled internally, and he won't give any any details. My guess is that the the league office. This is just a guess. You know, a flag was thrown on the play, and Raekwon was not ejected on the play. So you're you're overruling your official a little bit, and I think they'd like to sort of not officially do that, you know. And so it, if Nick says, "Look, we'll take." care of it. I don't know if that'll be a quarter. Had he been ejected, it would be a half. And that's a possibility. But, you know, will it be against Tennessee? I think it would. You know, I, I don't think that he'd hold it over to the Citadel or whatever. But, you know, it, it's a bad, a lot went on on that play. And, and I hear from a lot of Alabama fans, well, what about 47 twisting rubs his leg? Or what yep. about Mac getting kid and jumped on on that play and Raekwon's just trying to help him out but you know throwing fifth is, is, is a bad look and the league office needed to take a look at it uh, Raekwon's apologized for it uh, could he miss a quarter in Knoxville sure could he miss a half probably could miss a half not saying he will um, but I think that's how the league office wanted to I think they'd be much happier seeing Nick Saban handle it than having to go into our official should have done, should have ejected the player at the time, et cetera, et cetera. There you go. Uh, Cecil, as we let you go here, know that you were at the Tide tip-off event last night. 
I've got a strong opinion on my five guys for this Alabama basketball team that I want to see on the floor. And that's saying something because from a depth standpoint, Cecil, including the post, uh, with Kyra Lewis reclassifying coming in uh, this year instead of next year, uh, it, as far as depth goes, where, where would you put this team just on the on the surface heading into a season compared to some previous years? Oh, I think they're too deep at every position, which sounds like football, but I think that they are. Uh, you know, the the inside guys, I think are fine. You know, Dante and Giddens and and Galen. You know, I think how you ro- rotate that and. Fleming Davis obviously needs some work, but now he's got a you know he's got a frame. So so I think those guys can contribute in the post. I don't think you'll see as much of Alex in the post, Alex Reese, but he certainly looks better. Uh, they say not just last night, but over the course of the practices so far that he shot the ball really well. Um, the the thing that that I've you couldn't tell last night, or I didn't think you could, is exactly how the point guard situation is going to going to shake out. Um, Avery Jr. did some good things last night, and you know, Tyra is, is clearly talented, very talented. Uh, you know, he's skinny as a swizzle stick, as they like to say, and, and young. He's young. He's seventeen years old, and Dejan, um, yeah. Dejan did some good things. I think I think Avery's really trying to, to push him. You know, I just am, am not convinced that Dejan is a natural point. You know, that, yeah. that yeah. he can ball, he can handle it. Uh, they've they've got four guys that can handle because you can put Herb on there and, and really get by against most teams. Um, so it's it, it's really and I couldn't sort it all out last night. I could probably come up with a five, but I you know. I, I don't know that I'd be 100% comfortable saying that this will be the point. If it, I, I think if you did it on nothing but talent, it would it would be Kyra. But there are a lot of intangibles given to Kyra's age and experience level and, and um, his size at this point, although he'll be, you know, this time next year, I don't think that'll be an issue for him. Now here's my five, Cecil. And tell me where I'm wrong. Shoot holes in this, huh? okay? I got Kyra Lewis, John Petty, Dante Hall, uh, Herb Jones, and Tevin Mack. That's my five. I can make that work. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's that's fine. Again, I, yeah, wrap soon. I don't know. I don't know that that's a thirty-six minute a game, all five guys five with with the way the roster is. But that's you know you've I got a lot of Mac, versatility. I can stretch you, Mac. You, yeah, you can you can stretch defense with Mac and and Petty and um, you know they could press the heck Herb. out of people as quick as Kyrie is and Dante blocking shots on the back end and then you've got three six 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 sevens uh, athletic really athletic six 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 sevens uh, between those two so you could really stretch the floor um, so yeah that that. That unit is as good as any. I, I don't know. I'm not convinced you'll see uh, Kyra in the opener as a starting point guard. I'm not 100% convinced you won't see Avery Jr., um, at least to start with. Um, I think Reese is going to get some minutes. I think that uh, Galen's going to get some minutes. But you're, you're pretty versatile scoring with that lineup, too. Um, so, so yeah, that would be his, put Herb on the other team's best offensive player. You, mm-hmm. You'd be pretty good defensively. So yeah, I think that's that's probably uh, a pretty a pretty salty lineup against anybody. There you go, Cecil Hurt of the Tuscaloosa News and TideSports.com. We've kept you uh, too long as it is, Cecil. But as always, we appreciate the insight. Love having you here on the program. Look forward to doing it again real soon. Thanks a lot, Cecil. 